The following high school sports presentation on The Place for Local Sports, 1160 WSKW The Score, is brought to you by the following great local sponsors. Our video cast is powered by Central Maine Community College with over 40 academic degrees and certificates, one of the lowest tuition rates in New England, and 2023 high school graduates can get free tuition. Just go to cmcc.edu. More than just a community college, the radio broadcast is brought to you by Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterville, the dealer with no dock fees, where cars and trucks cost you less. Online at cmautogroup.com. Our live stream sponsor is Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations. Your building project partner, hammondlumber.com. Coverage also brought to you by Kennebec Eye Care for all your eye care needs. Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialists. Midstate Machine, looking for a career? Check out the Machinist Development Program at midstateusa.com. Whittemore and Sons, your coyote tractor dealer in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family that cares. Somerset Stone and Stove, offering quality gas, pellet, and wood stoves and hardscape products. 201 Tire Battery and Service, your tire and battery experts on the Augusta Vassalboro line. And by P.J. Diggs, the excavation pros. If it's dirt, they do it. Now, let's go live to Mike Violet and A.J. Knight. No Mike Violet this evening as uh, the kids are running the broadcast. I'm A.J. Knight. That's Ryan Bell. Adam Sirois is running the camera for us today as we're in Lawrence for a couple combo teams getting ready for a rematch. Yeah, definitely going to be a good game, a vastly important game for both teams. Morse sitting in 13th in the heel points, Lawrence in 15th, playing for the right to get a first-round matchup that doesn't resemble last year. Lawrence finished 0-12 last year, dead last. The 16th seed lost 31-1 to in the first round to Mesolonsky. On the other hand, Morse com com combined with Booth Bay went in the 12th seed with a record of 5-7 and last year, lost 19-4 to to Camden Hills. So both teams looking to move up in the heel points to get a competitive playoff game for sure. Second game between these two, the first time they met, Morse Booth Bay pulled out the win there. Uh, beating the uh, Lawrence combo team 14-6. Uh, to 6. That was back May 5th. And uh, since then, uh, Morris actually has hit a little bit of a skid coming in at 4-6. and six. The, You look at the goal totals for both these teams, starting with Morris, 7.8 goals scored per game, 9.1. Not a huge differential. Obviously, they're on the negative side of that. But they've lost four straight games, and they've lost them by uh, a combined score of 45-14. to 14. Yeah, not great. A couple of players that you really want to watch out here is for Lawrence, Liam Fortin, he had four goals and two assists in a recent game against Holton. That's a combined Northern Maine team. Six of the seven goals he had a hand in. Um, he's really the key to their offense for Lawrence, and he's their leading scorer on the year. Their goalie as well, Jacob York, has been stellar at times. He actually had an assist in that game, threw a wow. long ball out <laughs> to Fortin, who scored. Okay. Um, but he also had 27 saves in a game earlier this year against John Babst. He'll really be the key for Lawrence. On the other side, you look at Morse, and Sawyer Wright is the player I had marked down. He had four assists in their last game. It was a lost amount error at 6-10. to 10. So he assisted four of the six goals, really had a great game on the offensive end of things. He kind of sits at the top of their offense and facilitates things, a really good pass for the ball. Yeah, looking at this Lawrence team, they're looking to uh, improve from last season, which only I think the only way to go is up. And then looking at their goal differential, they're definitely trending in the right direction. 7.1 goals scored, 9.2 given up. Again, they're on the negative side of that, and it's skewed a little bit because they've had some big wins, but you're talking about a team really trying to rebuild, I think, almost from square one and trending in the right direction. They, they've, uh, they've had some big losses, but have generally been competitive, I would say, in pretty much all their games. Competitive, certainly, and they've done very well right here on this field. They're actually 2-3 and three at home, so they're sitting at 400 um, on the road 0-5. Oh, so if they're going to get it done, they're going to get it done right here in Fairfield. Well, that's a uh, home field advantage is for sure something, and we can't ask for a nicer day. i got to be honest, we originally had a uh, mistake on the schedule having this game last night as opposed to tonight. It wasn't rescheduled. We had it down wrong. And I cannot tell you how thankful I am that it is tonight and not yesterday. <laughs> yesterday yeah. was miserable. Yeah, we've had some, some cold broadcasts for sure. You know, I've been running the camera even 
at Nokomis the other day for baseball. I think we were all frigid. Mike had to go and get a winter jacket and some gloves at one point in time. So, yeah, definitely nice to see the sun out today. For clarity's sake, he is not out because he's sick, just while we're talking about that. Uh, sports on uh, 1160, the score, of course, brought to you by Central Maine Community College. More than a community college, over 40 academic degrees and certificates, one of the lowest tuition rates in New England, and 2023 high school graduates can get free tuition. Just go to cmcc.edu. Uh, you seeing in a, a little bit of your scouting report there, and again, both these teams, combo teams, Morris and Booth Bay joined together, and then Lawrence and Winslow. Um, let's talk about some of the scouting you've seen, obviously watching a little bit, having some statistics there. It's important to have that passer, and obviously a good goalie goes a long way. But in terms of penalties, it's what I think you always find in, in any sport, right? The teams that we, we saw, you talked about the Nokomis baseball game we just did earlier this week. Mistakes were a big factor in that game going sure. the way it did. Penalty-wise, what have you seen in terms of keeping the laundry off the field? I actually think Lawrence have done a pretty good job. They've been disciplined, but I think they do need to be physical and, and of course, avoiding penalties. But in man-up situations, they've done okay. Um, I mean, the best they can. Like you said, they haven't lost games by large margins. Right. I think a lot of it comes down to if they can put the ball in the back of their net themselves because giving up goals, I mean, what did you say, 9.3, 9.5? 9.2, yeah. 9.2 goals against is, is not horrible for no. high school across, no, especially for a team that's sitting at 2-8. and eight. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the, the couple things going your way and getting that to about 500, off, or even that's talking about a 500 record. Um, one thing for sure, obviously, penalties also important, especially for a team like Lawrence, who struggles to score, uh, and both these teams, obviously. Possession also going to be huge. We'll be watching that, obviously, with the game starting at faceoff because lacrosse, much like hockey, one of the two of the rare sports where just because you score doesn't mean you get possession back. You can right. play, make it, take it. And we've seen this season already uh, teams that are able to – a Meslonsky girls team comes to mind – they can – actually, both boys and girls. They can score, and then yep. they'll get the possession, and they'll run right back down on you. And for a team like Lawrence, who is, you know, looking for some of that momentum, being able to, one, keep the possession to keep your opponent away from scoring, but, two, give yourself more chances. Certainly. And, I mean, Lawrence Winslow, their combined name, the Outlaws, they have switched up their face-off takers a little bit. They have Colton Carter, who's their primary man, and he's done well at times and not so well at other times. You know, it's it's an arbitrary thing where you're going against another player and you're going to lose a lot if the other guy's better than you, and you're going to win a lot if, you know, you're, you're better than him. So he's done well at times. They've also had uh, Preston and Roy get in there as well, take a few face-offs. They switch it up a bit. Um, I really would not mark that down as a weakness for Lawrence at all, actually. They, they've they won their share of face-off. There hasn't been games where they've just consistently gotten beaten out and haven't gotten the possession because of that. Um, and I would say very similarly to Morse. Uh, I only watched that air at game for them. And they won, you know, not the majority, but close to of the face-offs as well. So... I don't see that being an issue for either side. I think it'll be very competitive in the circle, definitely right. today. Interesting. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Always important. Again, that's how face. Uh, that's how possession starts each time, and so a team able to gain advantage there gives themselves the opportunity to extend leads, hold leads, cut into leads, whatever you need to do. Really sets the tempo from the get go. And the big thing I think for both these teams too, it'll be interesting to see how much they push the envelope during transition, right? I've just talked about teams that in any sport that struggle to score, how aggressive do you get in transition going, uh, trying to clear, which will be important as well, trying to find some easy points, create those odd man situations, your four on threes, your five on fours. That'll be important to watch as well to see if either of these teams can take advantage in the quote unquote fast break situation. Yeah, I think Lawrence does well with that. Although fatigue may play a factor. Colby Neto, is a midfielder for them, number two. He often will run all the way down and play that X position behind the goal as a midfielder. Gotcha. So he'll run the full length of the field and then sit behind the goal when they're in offense and then have a sprint all the way back down the field. So well, how, how well his legs hold up could also be a major contributor to their victory or loss today. I mean, that X position is usually reserved for your best passer. And if it's your, I mean, obviously Neto has got to offer defense. There's a reason why, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, it covers the, the length because uh, we're here on a dedicated lacrosse field. As you can see, we're getting ready to start here. Uh, a dedicated lacrosse field. I forgot to correct the scoreboard. My apologies. Um, and the, de the dedicated lacrosse field's not quite as long as 
football end zone to end zone, but it's it's close. Yeah, definitely a long field for sure. Almost spans the entire track here on this field. The grass actually looks like it's in pretty good shape for lacrosse. I know oftentimes it gets torn up with the players running across it so much, but this is a well-kept field for sure. Yeah, it looks nice. I got no complaints here. Uh, we will quickly step aside and get the uh, ready for the starting lineups the national anthem to get this one underway. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell with you on the score. Lawrence hosting Morse in a rematch for boys lacrosse on 1160 AM, uh, AM 1160, the score. No keen tires available at 201 Tire Battery and Service Route 201 Vassalboro, your complete auto center. Mechanics you can trust. No keen tires to keep you safe on the road. Plus, 201 Tire Battery and Service is a state inspection station. They have batteries and accessories, including custom battery cables available. And of course, those great no key and tires 201 tire battery and service route 201 vassalboro for excavation in the greater Skowhegan Waterville area, call PJ Diggs. Septic systems installed, new or replacement, new driveways, foundation holes, full house lots. If it's dirt, they do it all. Need gravel, sand, or crushed aggregate for your project? Call PJ Diggs. They have all the materials you need ready for delivery. Spring is here, and it's time to start digging into your project. For a free quote, call PJ Diggs, 431-4299. The excavation pros. If it's dirt, they do it. Family and veteran owned. P.J. Diggs, 431-4299. And we're back. Game underway here and right on cue, as you alluded to, Ryan. A little bit of a scrum here as we real still haven't settled position for, uh, possession from the opening faceoff. Now Lawrence not still fighting over a ground ball. Ground ball is so key in this scrum still. Believe it or not, they have not moved from the opening faceoff. It's finally grabbing it is Connor uh Winners, and he throws that one away. So Morse quickly down on the offensive end. Long stick midfielder handling it. That's Lucas Campbell. Lucas Campbell moves down the wing. Looks like he calls off like he's going to crank it and decides better of it. Pulls back, and finally he's going to hand it off to Tate Scott. Excuse me, uh, Eric Insull. Yeah, Lucas Campbell, despite the orange helmet, is actually from Lawrence. He's been a starting long pull for them, the center of their defense. He's going to have a has work cut, his work cut out for him today, that's for sure. So slowly moving around here, not quick to go is this Morse team. Handling it now from the top of the box, shows a face dodge, dodging down the alley, gets some space, frees his hand, shot, easy save there. First one of the game for Lawrence. Credit to uh, Fortin there. Coming down the alley. Clearing so important, so Lawrence quickly the other way, have a chance here in transition. Center of the field there, cut off. Lawrence back it out to the top of the box and set up their offense. Picking it up there is Bjorn Lang Langer, excuse me. No, mix up my roster. Liam Fortin. No, that is Langer. I think Morse is in the blues. I got my teams backwards. I apologize. <laughs> Morris has possession here. I, so Lawrence is blue, and it's confusing me. It's like watching Nokomis and Foxcroft, and they both wear maroon. It is. The combined teams, though, I think their colors officially are actually white and gray from what I saw. Working from the wing there, trying to dodge, cut off quickly. Morse goes back to the top of the box. Lang, uh, Lang, Langard hangs on to it, now moves it around. Shot there. That one's going to go by. Morris the only one, though, with backup, so they'll retain possession. Yeah, Langer, a captain on this Morse team. He had a goal in their loss to Mount Ararat. He's been one of their key offensive players. Tried to force that one in on the crease. Nothing doing there. Good defense by Lawrence. Now lay a shot. That one misses the cage wide and able to track that one down is Austin Wood. So Morse will keep possession here. Two shots, neither of them on a uh, cage yet. Moving around the box. Try to throw the crease. Nice pass. Nothing doing there. Not a pretty good chance for a shot from uh, Dimmers, but instead he pulls it out to the top of the box. Gives it up. Now weak shot there. That one misses Cage. That one was Langer trying to roll, and I think got a little bit of a lift on his hands. Really took a lot off of it. Working around the top of the box. Shows dodge. Slide comes quickly from Lawrence, so backing out is Langer. That pass is short. Hits the grass. Able to pick it up quickly, though, is Tristan Beveridge. Quite a name that is. <laughs> I know. Right? He, please tell me every time he scores a goal, he says, I'm <laughs> serving him up. 
Langard loses there and then on the check has to track it down. Nice swat there from the Lawrence defense. Good ground ball, then runs into a lot of traffic, still able to fall into the stick of a Lawrence offensive player. Skips that one over, frees a hand, shot, another easy save there. As that one's grabbed again out of the air by Martin. Yeah, I thought Fortin had some space there to attack the goal, instead chose to take the longer range shot. And a nice save there from Michael Martin. Good right here from Lawrence. They knock it down and draw a flag here. It's going to go against Morse. It's going to continue here until the play stops or they score. Chance there. Oh, a great look. Standing there right in front of the crease was Mason Carter. Just couldn't get the pass there. So that goes out of bounds, and we'll get our first penalty of the game. It's going out is, I think, Michael Ryan who's going to take a knee here. Yeah, I mentioned in the pregame, Lawrence in man-up situations have been okay. I think Coach Alex Higgins will hope for better so far this season, but definitely a big opportunity here if you're Lawrence to start out on the front foot. So working very patiently from the backside of the goal is Mason Carter. Now they move it back behind X to Fortin. Always interesting to see man upsets there. Do you really deal from X? Do you pressure from there? Taking their time here, Fortin gives it up to the wing. Space there, shot coming, that one high and over the cage. That was uh, Colton Carter. Couldn't get that one on target. So reset here. Of course, Lawrence has the backup. They'll move it now to the top of the offensive box as they work it around. Last ball there, pressure from Morris. Chance here with an unsettled situation. Fortin gets it. Shows his hands. Now there gets checked out as he held his shot fake too long. Morse able to pick that one up quickly the other way. Chance in transition here. Four on three. Ooh, I think a mistake. Well, I was going to say, I think a mistake. They had numbers there, but also you want to kill the penalty and get back to even strength. Probably the more mature thing here from Morse to hang on to this one and run out the penalty time. Yeah, head coach Cooper Quenville for Morse in his first season, a Middlebury, Vermont native. He played D2 at St. Michael's, uh, spent six years as the assistant coach at Bowdoin before accepting oh, the job. What a snag there. Credit to uh, Tyler Dow to pull that one out of the air, to take that one away from the Morse offense. Now he's going to go with a long pass up near midfield, looking for Fortin, who pulls that one out of the air. Chance here in transition. Borden tries to go left, now gets some space, gets cut off there, gets to the cage, shot! That one gets saved again. Still loose in front of the crease and finally able to clamp down on it is Michael Martin. Give him already three saves on the day. Yeah, I mentioned that York assist. It was very similar to that where the ball was flung long. Fortin went up and grabbed it and got a nice shot off. Shot again. Lost in the dirt there. Martin got a piece of it. Nice bounce shot there, but didn't get much bounce. That one got buried in the dirt, so Martin already four saves on four shots. There's a blessing there, but that dirt in front of the net can definitely be a curse at times. Hard to read here where the whole surface is nice grass, but then you get a bit of dirt right in front. you got to watch out, too. I believe uh, there was a playoff game, NCAA Division I playoffs going right now. I can't, I can't remember which game it was. There was a goalie who lost track. I think it was the Penn State-Princeton uh, game. Penn State goalie lost track of it, kicked his own ball in. Morris handle it now, working through the top of the box, waiting for it at the point is Tab, uh, Tabor Gale now trying to get into the crease. Weak pass there, quickly scooped up. Nice ground ball from Dow, who has it for Lawrence. Gets it to his goalie. York can take his time here as he walks out of the crease. No pressure here. Midfield comes back for it, takes a hit for his troubles, but is able to work its way through. Again, Lawrence a chance. Fortin on the backside here. Nice job cutting him off there by the Morse defense. And that one is airmailed over Fortin's head, going to be out of bounds, unforced air there. So turnover on Lawrence. Just about seven minutes gone here in the first. Still nothing, nothing. Lawrence at this point has been much more aggressive or much more successfully aggressive. Morse has really struggled to get into its sets. Yeah, Morse not looking like the better team on paper so far here. And Morse did win the first matchup between these two. Significantly, too. 14 to 6 was the final on that one. Morse trying to set up its offense again. Working from the point now over to the wing. Tries to get center, now goes back to the top. Nice dodge there, gets inside, draws a lot of attention. Tries to get that one on cage, but just too much traffic there. Now ground ball scrum in front of the cage. Morse able to retain there, coming out of the piles, Michael Ryan. He gets it back here from the wing, now goes behind. Backside, nice pass. 
Beautiful goal there, coming around the edge of the crease and putting it in. It was Austin Wood with the goal. He had a goal and an assist against Mount Ararat. Opens the scoring here tonight. As you see, just a nice look there and kind of that unsettled situation. Ryan able to find uh, Wood coming off the backside, and you get close like that. More often than not, that offensive player is going to bury it. So actually, too, uh, Ryan was the one that drew the penalty, so makes up for it. So that makes it one nothing. First goal comes with just over uh, seven minutes gone, about seven and a half. Lawrence wins the faceoff, chance to even it up here. Could even argue that goal was against the run of play. Quick pass, that was almost a shot. Trying to work it into uh, Wyatt Pullen. Missed him, and then I think going to credit a save there. Uh, for Morris, he had to actually get down and put his stick on that one. Loose ball again. Chance here for a ground ball. Not first try. Nice swat forward. Got to watch that offsides. Now he flips it into the offensive end and able to pick it up there for Lawrence is Everett Hunt, excuse me, uh, Mason Carter. Now Fortin handles from the left wing. Fortin has drawn his fair share of attention from the midshipman. Midshipman. Mid uh, excuse me, shipbuilders, more shipbuilders. Shipbuilders, yeah. Which, by the way, we had a conversation pregame, take you behind the scenes about how we need more cool mascots. Shipbuilders, cool mascot. Very cool. They're from Bath, which is one of the leading shipbuilding towns in America. Fist. So very fitting, yeah. Fortin tried to shoot there, got his hands lifted, couldn't put that on cage, got credit for the shot, but no backup for Lawrence. Mistake there, so now Morse a chance to clear here. Took a shot. Oh, man, when you're chasing one of those long sticks, that butt end just tempts you. And they, everybody wants to take a swat at it, but they all coaches will tell you, you don't swat it. Big hit there by Lawrence. That one's going to draw the penalty. Is That's going to be a cross check. As Coach Wood, will tell you big hit? No, sorry. <laughs> that You don't swat at the stick. You lift the stick. You take your mesh to lift the stick to drop it out the back end. <laughs> had, to, had to take a second there and give credit for that monster yeah. hit. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it was a cross check because the hands were not together. So uh, now Lawrence down one nothing already is going to give man opportunity here to Morse. As Preston Roy absolutely laid him out, headed towards the out of bounds line. I like the aggressiveness, just got to do it the right way. So Wood handling it with the goal, quickly flips it up to the wing, switch the left hand as they work it around. Now the box, wing shot there, sidearm just a little bit high and over the crossbar, going to go out of bounds. But Wood has the backup, so it'll stick with. Morse, uh, 2.57 here to go in the first one. Nothing, Morse on top. Wood presses GLE, now gives it up to the wing. Ryan gives it up to the top midfielders. Now they work it around. Back up to the point. Now for the wing shot again. That one, a piece of it. York got a piece of that one. It's going to deflect out of bounds, and Wood able to track that one down. A yeah, very nice save there from Jacob York. Also a soccer player for Lawrence, although he's a defender, not a goalie in that sport. Morse doing a nice job on this. Well, they seem like they have a look they liked. That one finally had Cage. York couldn't track it down or couldn't keep it, was able to get a piece of it and keep it out. Now they work it back and forth on the wing. Get it inside of the crease. Nice defense there to not let the hands free. Now Morse pulls it back out. Shot, bounce shot, and in. Credit there. I wasn't sure if that got by York, but it did, and that goal goes to uh, Tristan Beveridge. Beveridge had a great year so far, put in a hat trick against Mount Air at three of their six goals in that one. He's their left-sided attack, and he's done a really good job. So Beveridge gets the goal, and the assist goes to, I believe, Tyson French. So 2 nothing Morse on top of Lawrence, and... If you were to take the scoreboard away as we get 2-12 left here in this first period, I, I would say Lawrence, to me, at this point, has been more aggressive. Excuse me, looks like the slightly better team, just it's about also executing in the right moments. Yeah, I think Morse in their offensive sets when they've gotten the ball in their possession and have really calmed down in the offensive end, they've looked like the better team, but haven't been able to have clean play, have clean passes, and... That's been what's really hurt them, although they're still in front 2 nothing. so no complaints there. Now Lawrence wins that face-up, but Connor Winters does a nice job checking 
Uh, that was Garrett LeClark and is able to take that one away to get Morse another possession. So they're up 2-0 with the ball again. 139 here to go in the first. Working from the top of the box, that's Peyton James. James gives it down to the wing. Now they move it down to X. Wood just came to challenge GLE, now backs off. Skip pass to the top of the box. Shot that one wide of the cage. And the easy setup again. Wood working from that uh, attack, a passing position at X and has done a nice job backing up his teammates' shots. And you can see Lawrence giving him a lot of attention, setting up a huge wall across GLE both sides. That pass gets away, but Morris able to track it down. Ground ball scooped up by Peyton James. He's working from the point, top of the box. Now over to the wing. Handling it there is Tyson French. French goes back to Wood behind the cage. Wood standing at X, waiting for a cutter. Now instead going to get a screen. Quickly pushed out, though. Nice job there by David Bolduck to push him away. And now Morse passing around the top again. 42 seconds left in this one. That pass is going to go wide, and that's out of bounds. It's going to be a turnover on the shipbuilders. Yeah, really odd that um, Peyton James is sitting at the point for Morse where Sawyer Wright, number nine, who I don't think has featured so far tonight, or is that him right there? Regardless, he typically sits at the point for Morse, so I'm, yeah, he's there with a with a long pole actually. So I don't know if Morse is trying to get him comfortable in a different position, or if the film I watched, I I got the wrong number, but <laughs> I could have sworn it was Sawyer Wright sitting at the point with four assists in their last game against Arat. So Lawrence fails a clear step in. York got a piece of that bounce shot, is able to push it wide. That one from uh, Bjorn Langard. So give York another save. Beautiful split save there from York. Langer drops that one up backside. Great look, but Wood couldn't handle it, and he couldn't quick stick it, and that is how the first period comes to end. So after one, it is Morse two, Lawrence nothing. We will be back to Lawrence for the start of the second period in just a few minutes on AM 1160, the score. I came for a visit, and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and, like, just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell with you on 1160 AM. Say that wrong every time. AM 1160, the score, WSKW. Adam Sears running camera for us. And sports on the score brought to you by the Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterfield, the dealer with no dock fees where cars and trucks cost you less. Online at cmautogroup.com. Thus far, I think Lawrence done a nice job. I think they've won their fair share of faceoffs. I like what they've attempted to do on the offensive end. I think to this point, execution has not been... Superb by either Morris, I think, has just done a nice job making a few more routine plays. Specifically, I think Wood having that backup and then being able to get a couple more possessions, a couple more looks for the shipbuilders. Well, it's certainly apparent that Morris watched their film. They've really dialed in on Liam Fortin for the Outlaws, and they've locked him down thus far. He's their primary source of offense, so I think that's a big factor in the goose egg on the scoreboard for the Lawrence Winslow Outlaws. It is 2-0. Morse on top as we get ready for the faceoff here to start the second period. Morse in blue. Lawrence, confusingly enough, in gray and white. Chance there. That one popped up. Lawrence, I think, again, a chance uh, initially won by Morse. Lawrence able to gather excuse me, the uh, faceoff initially. And of course, jinxed it as now we have a scrum for it. Now Lawrence has possession again. Actually going to draw a flag, I think, on a hold there. So man up. There's a trip. I think technically you get a second yeah. flag there. And they're going to say when the ball hit the ground, even though I think ah, that was a quick whistle there. i got to be honest. I'm a little bit unhappy if I'm Lawrence because I think Morse has to possess it to get the stoppage. Well, it's, that's just an interesting play off the faceoff. Carter won it 
cleanly, you thought, and then he just couldn't scoop up the ground ball. Lawrence get lucky and get the penalty there, but really should have been a clean faceoff when they set up the offense. Said they go man up. A uh, little bit of confusion here. Lawrence is playing. The scoreboard isn't running. Also, whoever drew the penalty isn't taking a knee in the penalty box. <laughs> I was going to tell you who it was, but they have not dropped to one knee like they're supposed to. So a little bit of confusion here. Lawrence is man up. They threw a flag, and the play didn't stop while Lawrence had possession. So I'm pretty positive it's against Morse. Yeah, I think it's Ryan Amaral that should be getting the penalty. He's standing on the end of the Morse bench, just not on a knee. I think the ref didn't queue up to the scoreboard, so they didn't know what was going on either. So we've got a penalty. So man up here for Lawrence. Second opportunity on the day. And Amaral takes the knee now. Now we got our culprit. I hope it's him. He does look like he's tying his shoe, so. <laughs> yeah, he stays on. It's him. Okay, so Lawrence has moved around the box here. He's looking to try and finally crack that goose egg, cut into this 2 nothing more shipbuilders lead. Back at X, that pass low, quickly scooped up. Nice job, and that one handed off uh, immediately to Martin. Increase, so a chance here for Morse to burn some clock. Nice swim dodge there, even though he took some contact, able to get around it. That's Liam Druniak. Draws the penalty. And now that's exact. Lawrence doesn't get even get a shot on goal and gets a penalty the other way. So now Morse can kill this penalty. Well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> that pass short, and it's going to be a turnover, though that'll activate the penalty here against Lawrence. So it should be, I believe, five on five for X amount of time. And the look it looks like for Lawrence the penalty is on uh Mason Carter. Mason Carter. Yep. So five on five here. See how Morse plays us as they work from the wing. Handling it there is Bjorn Langard. Still has it. Finally gives it up now. Looks uh, they're going to go up. So man up here for the shipbuilders. Chance to add to a 2 nothing lead. 10-24 to go in the second. They pass back and forth on top of the box. Now Langer's got it, has a cutter. I think looks about stepping in instead and pulls it back out. That pass short, it's going to roll. But being man down, Lawrence not going to extend the defense too much here. Some sloppy, unnecessary errors. You see another one right there from Morse. Kind of shooting themselves in the foot so far. Nice job bodying up there by uh, Lucas Campbell to take that one away. That pass goes over the head of his intended player, Poland, who's got to track that one down. Now tries to body up along the inline as they wait to see as it goes out. Still fighting for it. Poulin finally comes away with it. Unsettled situation. Bounce pass, right idea, just absolutely missed. Coming in off the sideline in the substitution was Noah Grass and just absolutely missed him, and now it's going to go the other ways. We see teams here trading some sloppy passes back and forth. I will say the grass is helping things for both teams as it's holding up the ball from going out of play, and we see a timeout here. Yeah, Morse going to take a timeout there, not the, the most flawless execution on either team. Both were man up for a second. Uh, and both failed to get a shot on goal. 2 nothing. Morse on top, 921 here to go in the second period. We'll step aside here for just a minute on AM 1160 WSKW, the score. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy, because it's all about taking care of people. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell with you on AM 1160 WSKW. The score, local sports on the score, brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company. Serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations, your building project partner, HammondLumber.com. Really, I think the difference, these teams have played about even. The difference has been, I think, the quality of shots that Morse has gotten on versus Lawrence because uh, 
Morris has really actually struggled. They probably have about the same shot attempts, but Morris has really struggled to get theirs on cage. The difference is they've gotten two by, whereas Lawrence has had uh, five saved by um, Michael Martin for the shipbuilders. They have, and I think quality of shot comes with their offensive setups. Morris, a team that likes to move the ball a bit more, where Lawrence relies on the dodge at times, especially, again, with Fortin. And so I think Lawrence can facilitate their offense, move the ball a little more, and their quality of shot might go up and might pop one in before the end of this quarter. So timeout, Morse comes out of the timeout. Both teams had man-up advantage. No shots generated from it as Lawrence turned it over, then committed a penalty on their man-up. Morrison trying to take advantage, immediately turned it over and had their penalty pretty much run out. Now they start again. Back behind Cage, a little bit of a switch up here. Now it was uh, Wood for a while. Now that was uh, James handling it. There's a shot there that's going to go wide. James able to track it down. So change here from the X position. James starts again behind Cage, moves it up to the wing. That's Gale. Gale throws it in the cutter in the crease. Not liking it, those dimmers, and he's going to try and pass it out. Gale's got to track it down. No pressure here from Lawrence, really packing it in in front of the cage. Yeah, James was at the point. Now he goes into that X spot. Interesting change. Gale gets that. tripped. Uh, no call there. No whistle. Lawrence able to come out of it. Quickly turning on the Jets for the Bulldogs. That's Tate Scott. Right idea there. And that one, uh, I don't blame. I don't put it on Scott. I think Poulin held up short there. Right idea. Scott had Poulin right on the doorstep. And Poulin, I think, just stopped short. So that pass rolls into Martin's stick. And Morse able to quickly get it down to the offensive end. As you see, Dimmers walking it into the offensive zone. How about the wheels there from Tate Scott to get it all the way into the offensive end, though? Quickly gives it to James. Now Dimmers is going to get it back on the wing. Doesn't like it, so he's going to work top side, look for some help. Gives it up to Michael, uh, excuse me, Tyson French. That's Michael Ryan. Sets up a dodge here. Now tries the body up. French doesn't catch that one, gets it on the second bounce. Now under pressure. Some checks there from Dawson Chapman. That pass goes high. Ryan's got to chase that one down. That one stays in bounds. He's able to scoop it up. You weren't kidding. I think the grass length helping out. Some of these stay in bounds. That one picked off trying to do a skip pass. Instead ends up in the stick again of Tate Scott as he turns on the Jets. And now a chance. Four on three here. Nice dodge by Fortin. Goes around again. Split dodge. Shot and goal. There it is. That's their main man. And it, uh, no surprise you talked about the attention he got as you take a look at the replay here. You know, we'll give Scott, because we're generous, we will give him an assist on that one. But there, nice roll dodge, then gets a split dodge to free up his left hand, and he gets Lawrence on the board first. With uh, That cuts it to just 2-1. And we talked about that, too. Both these teams at times, uh, their goal differentials haven't been great on the season, struggling to find it. Good way to help get Fortin free from all that attention. Find him in the transition game. So that makes it 2-1. to one. Morse on top. 7.34 here to go in the first half. Did you ever take face-offs when you were playing lacrosse? I did. I tried for a little bit. I actually wasn't bad at it, but we had we actually had a kid on my team that went to Georgia Tech wow. for face-offs specifically. Some, yeah, that's some stiff competition. No joke. I was going to ask, though, do, do you prefer the short stick or the, or the long pole when you did your face-offs? I played, so I was a midfielder. My I played three years. I was midfielder my first two years, and I played attack my last year. Okay. Well, do you do you think that makes a difference though, the the length of the stick when you're doing the face off? Uh, I think you have more control on the short side, especially you know. There's a couple of basic moves. I think the game's gotten a little bit more innovative. As much as anything, uh, in un a nice pickoff again. Lawrence really jumping those passing zones. That one's still loose. Chance to track it down. Nice ground ball there. Uh, by that one picked up by Langard. Good thing he does because uh, my coach used to say, if you're going to use one hand to pick up a ground ball, you better get it, otherwise you run. <laughs> so now Morris tries to work it back behind Langard. Pressured there, finally gives it up. No, nope, excuse me, fake the pass. He's still got it. He's going to pull that way out. I expect some kind of dodge here at some point. Gives it up to Wood, who's now going to run away from the defense. Wood takes it to the right wing. Tries to turn on some speed there. Nothing doing. Good defense from Preston Roy. Yeah, really good defensive possession here for the Outlaws as a whole. Shot from Langer. That one scooped by York. <laughs> nice job there. He's able to track that one easily. As I say that, they give up a wide open shot at the point. Well, there's a certain aspect uh, to it. It depends. 
Um, both offensively and for your goalie, your goalie has a, more often than not, and maybe not so much at the high school level, but they'll tell you to pick the spots. You, your defense should know roughly right. where you feel comfortable picking sp- shots out from. Sure. And obviously offensive players have a little bit of their limit too. That one might have – I think that one is a little bit past Langer's range. That one somehow gets to the cage, hits the outside of the net though, so York's able to easily pick it up. Looking for an outlet there. Oh, Great opportunity for Morse to pick it off. Just couldn't keep it in his stick. That was French trying to jump that one. Had a chance to create some transition. Instead, it goes to Wheels, which is Scott. Scott gets into the crease but could not handle it. Goalie draws a check there. Still loose. The cage is open. If someone can get it, Scott still can't get it on. Still loose. Now, finally, Martin able to get back at his cage. Nice job there. Great opportunity for Carter. Couldn't do it and then gave Martin a little check for his troubles and kept the cage open, but nobody could track the ground ball. Still now, Scott gets it. Draws a check, and they're going to draw the penalty there. Uh, There's a nice swinging gate check there uh, by French. I think they're going to get him for right before that. He definitely cross-checked. Didn't put his hands together and went in shaft first. Um, Sorry, but to answer your question, yes, I think you have more (laughs) control with the short stick. Um, But as much as anything... Face-offs, don't be me wrong, an individual face-off ability is important, but it's communicating with your wingers, too, like letting them know, I'm going right. to push this forward, I'm going to push this backwards, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I think with a short stick, you have a lot more control over what you want to do with the rake and the scoop and the sweep. So man up again. This will be the third man up uh, opportunity here for Lawrence. They're 0 for 2, didn't even generate a shot on their second one. Chance here to tie this one up. So working from the top, that's Colton Carter. Now they get it down to goal line extended as they work it up. That one bounces off the top of the stick of Roy. Roy has to track it down. Still inbounds. He's going to take a push. I know there's a whistle. It seemed like everybody stopped, but there wasn't. Skip pass and that one, I think that was a great opportunity, I think, for Carter. Instead, he gave it up. So now they move it around the top of the box. Shot that one high and over the top of the crossbar and out of bounds. I talked earlier about Lawrence's home record being so good, and half of me thought that was a coincidence, but I think this grass surface is hugely helpful for them. But I mean, seriously, like Morse is, is struggling to scoop up these ground balls, and it seems like Lawrence has a better idea of, of how to win those. Cardo Hanley gave it up, so pulling from the top of the box. Now Pullen's going to get it back as he moves more to the center. He shoots, bounce shot, that one well wide of the cage. Goes out of bounds, that one's going to be tracked down by uh, Noah Grass. I got to be honest here for Lawrence. Uh, I'm surprised, have not seen 10, which I think he, Fortin just had it. So there was a skip pass to pull, and as you say, Fortin hadn't touched it yet on the man up. Still working around here, pinching the side shot, bounce shot. I think Martin got a piece of that one. Going to go out of bounds, stay with Lawrence. I'm going to credit him with a save because I believe he got a piece of that. 2 1, 4 5 here to go in the first half. Morse on top of Lawrence. Find X, challenging GLE, skip pass. Fortin had to body that one up, try and track it down. Still loose. Now it's going to work out to the infield. Great ground ball there. Morse has a chance on the other end. Odd man opportunity. Right idea. And again, credit Lawrence. They have been doing a nice job getting their sticks into those passing lanes. That one rolls out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover on the shipbuilders. And taking the. Uh, Clearing opportunity is going to start with Bullduck. And Bullduck can't keep it in his stick, and it quickly goes out of, out of bounds and now going to go back to the shipbuilders. He's got to turn around and watch Austin Wood. Wood comes from behind GLE, gets out to the wing, now going to give up to one of his midfields. That one cut off again. Nice job there. Puts the brakes on, now tries to skip it up, finds Carter. Carter's working with some space. He's got pulling with him on the left side. Tries to drop it off at the doorstep. Good check there. He's trying to go backside to Fortin. And that was a really nice back check to keep the stick down from uh, William Clifford. Martin gets caught out of the cage. as a nice stop dodging. Now he finds uh, Clifford. Clifford gets midfield back. Now he's going to move cross field pass. Bad idea. And that one's going to go out of bounds. Another turnover. Sloppy play on both sides today. Yeah, I think that definitely benefits Lawrence, if anybody, though. As you can see, they're able to stay in the game, but on paper, I think both of us had this marked down as Morse potentially running away with it. Yeah, based on, the, you know, you look at the season, and in any given game, as the saying goes, you don't fair. play the game on paper. Morse won the first matchup by eight. Losing his footing there, goes down, turnover. 
is trying to put the brakes on uh, was David Bolduck and couldn't do it. It's going to be Davin Bolduck, and so Morris ends up with the possession. Can't really generate transition out of it, but it's another offensive possession regardless. 234 here to go in the first half. 2-1, Morse on top. Another pass finds a hole in a stick, fortunately, as it hits the ground. But to my point of the of the loose balls helping Lawrence, their one goal is come in transition, and then you saw a minute ago they almost had another one. So I think scooping up a ground ball and getting numbers in the offensive zone has definitely been an advantage for them, whereas when they set up an offense, they haven't had quite as much luck scoring the ball. I will say this grass does look longer. It makes it so that your technique is that much more important. Working around the box, tried to skip that one in. Nice check there by, uh, that was LeClark, excuse me, Michael, uh, no, sorry. We got my roster mixed up. LeClark was able to check the stick there and keep that one from going by. It doesn't go out of bounds, though, and I think that's what you see normally. I think most fields, that would roll. Great outlet pass. York's able to find Scott. <laughs> up, and he takes a uh, seat there. It's Carter, and that one gets rocketed up in the air. Scott tries to go for it, and... I think we're getting offsides here on Morris. I think a little bit of confusion. Some of the long poles not where they were supposed to be. Yep, offsides. So that one will go back over to Lawrence. A little bit of mistake here from the shipbuilders. The attackmen could could pressure this. There's not a whole lot of distance to get into the midfield, but also if I'm did they restart? No. I think there's a little bit confusing. If I, I'm not happy if I'm Lawrence. L lacrosse, much like soccer, one of those games where you can start quickly, and instead Morse able to get in a whole host of substitutions. Yeah, referee's having a word here about that, I'm sure. Well, I, I, I wonder if the discussion is, I said offsides. I think offsides actually is a penalty. It is in the, in the college. I believe it is in lacrosse as well, so it was probably, no, there's a flag. Yeah, so it's offsides, so it should be man up for Lawrence. Yeah, Alex Higgins on the sideline throwing his hands up. I think he's definitely in agreement with you on that one. Yeah, I would be livid because you got all these substitutions in. So they picked up, maybe they, how many Morse defenders are out there? Five, yeah. So it's man up. No, it's six. It was not man up. So they waved off the flag. So it wasn't offsides. I and mean, I guess it was a push in the back. Something more minor gave Lawrence possession. So it's still six on six lacrosse. Working for Mass, tried to skip that one out, and another pass jumped. Ground balls rocketed up in the air, trying to track it down for Morse. Is Ryan Amaral, but cannot do so, so Lawrence will keep it. Man-to-man -man passing. Skip passes only, I mean, there's going to be a lot. You know there's going to be a ton of traffic there. We're going to get a timeout here. I think this one's going to come on behalf of Lawrence. 2-1, Morse on top of Lawrence. Uh, one oh two here to go in the first half. We'll step aside for a minute on AM 1160 WSKW Score. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits MidState Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidStateUSA.com. That's MidStateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Coach Alec, Alex His Higgins of the uh, Lawrence Winslow Combo team getting an explanation there during the timeout. Um, his confusion, I think, our confusion as well. His refs threw a flag. They picked one up, but I guess they waved it off. But the thing that's more upsetting than it, I think, for Higgins wanting the explanation of why not the flag for sure, but if they, even if there wasn't a flag, the refs held up the game for a good 15 seconds, and in that time, Morse shuffled in a whole new midfield when Lawrence potentially could have had transition opportunity. Lawrence finds himself trailing 2-1 here. They've got the ball, though. He's handling it from way on the wing is Fortin. He quickly is going to give that up to uh, Colton Carter, working at the top of the box, going to switch places there. Now they work it to the wing. Scott handling it. 
Fort not even coming into the offensive set, just sitting way out on the wing. That one had to be tracked down. Carter, Carter going to dodge now, split, roll, dodge, and then gets checked and loses it. Now going to go the other way. 35 seconds for Morse to try and get one on. Nice. I think that was a smart play there not to get that check. He cranked way back on that one. Shot quickly, not able to get on cage. So nice backup from Morse, so they'll keep possession. 25 seconds left here. Working from GLE is uh, Bev Tristan Beveridge. He's going to give it up to Langard. Langard moves it down the wing. That's Winners. Winners is going to get a pick there. Nothing doing as he's cut off. Now Langard steps in, shot. That one hits the pipe. And that one's going to bounce out of bounds. It's going to stay with Morse. Four seconds left. Langard was able to beat York there, but the, the uh, pole's able to save. Quickly backside York. Negative angle shot. That one goes through. Does it count? Waiting for the ref's decision here. I think it was after. I think so, too. Ref not waiting for a second. We're going to get a discussion. We'll take a look at the replay here momentarily. And they're going to say good goal. Wow. So unlucky if you're Lawrence. That one somehow made it through the body of York. And on the other side waiting for it was the Morse player who just popped it into an empty net. Take a look at this replay again here as you get the reset. York tries that negative angle shot. Misses. And that's scooped up and put in. We'll have to take a look at that in the, as we take a break here for halftime. So either way, the ref calls it good. York picks up the assist. We'll get a number on who scored there. And uh, that was worthy of a Kennebec eye care. We'll, uh, Kennebec eyelight. We'll pay that off when we come back because talk about a buzzer beater. So at half, it's 3-1. to one. Morse on top. We'll be back in a few minutes here. Uh, A.J. Knight, Ryan Bell with you on AM 1160 WSKW, The Score. This year, your tax return could literally improve every moment of your life with a new pair of glasses or an eye exam from your friends at Kennebec Eye Care in Waterville. Even if you already own a pair, it's always a good idea to have an extra set. Keep a backup pair at home for emergencies. Leave an extra pair at work. Or how about prescription sunglasses or computer glasses? Call 872-2797 to schedule an appointment. Kennebec Eye Care, 216 Main Street in Waterville. Online at KennebecEyeCare.com. Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialist. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. Nokian Tires, available at 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. Your complete auto center. Mechanics you can trust. Nokian Tires to keep you safe on the road. Plus, 201 Tire Battery and Service is a state inspection station. They have batteries and accessories, including custom battery cables available. And, of course, those great Nokian Tires. 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. AJ and I, Ryan Bell with you at halftime here in Fairfield where Lawrence finds themselves trailing 3-1 to one on a, I don't want to call it controversial. I would call it controversial. Split second. Let's take a look at the replay again here and then give it its, its due respect here. See if we can see who this is. So on a quick, there was four seconds left on this restart. You get to see York comes up from GLE, misses entirely, but as a teammate there on backup who's able to put that in, Still unsure who that was roster wise, and the Tyson rest French maybe was it French? I thought initially it was four, but I think you're right. There was a two somewhere in there. Uh, but regardless, the refs decided to they took a second and then decided that they called that a good goal after about a ten second debate. And I mean, I don't know that buzzer beaters get more much more buzzer beatery than that. So that worthy of a Kennebec uh, I care I light of the game. Kennebec I care your I light sponsor is uh, for all your eye care needs, Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialist. And that makes it 3-1 to one in what has been a surprisingly close game. We'll uh, take a look at some of the numbers, some of the analysis when we come back. Again, Morse on top of Lawrence, 3-1 to one at half here in Fairfield. We'll be back in just a few 
on AM 1160 WSKW, the score. For excavation in the greater Skowhegan Waterville area, call PJ Diggs. Septic systems installed, new or replacement, new driveways, foundation holes, full house lots. If it's dirt, they do it all. Need gravel, sand, or crushed aggregate for your project? Call PJ Diggs. They have all the materials you need ready for delivery. Spring is here, and it's time to start digging into your project. For a free quote, call PJ Diggs, 431-4299. The excavation pros. If it's dirt they do it family and veteran owned pj Dix 431-4299 i came for a visit and i just fell in love with it they just want to see you be you and like just excel there's a lot of opportunities here it really gives me time to figure out what i want to do with my life it's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be the tuition is definitely part of what brought me here you know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone & Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone & Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone & Stove in Oakland. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy, because it's all about taking care of people. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell with you here at halftime, 3-1. to one, The Morse-Booth uh, Bay combo team on top of Lawrence Winslow combo team, 3-1. to one. And the closest we got to an agreement on that last goal that we'll show you the replay to one more time was... I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> it looked like it was after to me. But again, as a referee in that position, to call the goal off, I think, makes you look worse than if you put the goal in. You know what I mean? So I think yeah, it, it, it's, it's a goal. It's a goal. That's what we'll <laughs> That's go with. That's kind of seems like how the analysis went. Either way, <laughs> it doesn't matter what we ultimately debate up here. They called it good, and that makes it 3-1 to one in a game that has been, well, closer, I think, than we expected. Um, I think maybe a, lo a little bit sloppier than we expected as well. Certainly. Certainly, and I think it would be a lot worse if it wasn't for the length of the grass here tonight. So many balls not rolling out of bounds. It's led to a lot more scrums, a lot more difficult of a time for Morse to scoop up those ground balls who I believe traditionally play their home games on a turf surface. And again, coming from that southern main area, a lot more of the fields they play on are turf surfaces. So definitely a home field advantage if you're the Lawrence Winslow Outlaws. I think one of the things that really surprised me and you in that first half of the Lawrence offense, execution has been a little bit of a challenge for both teams. But I think one of the team things that surprised the both of us is um, it seemed like Lawrence at any given time, and they've been man up three times, and I feel like Fortin has barely touched the ball on man up. Yeah, and that last couple of possessions for, for Lawrence, Fortin was just sitting all the way to the left side, almost like they were trying to draw a defender out which is very interesting. They actually got a decent look on that possession, but I'm not entirely sure what they're trying to do with their offensive sets. They've definitely swished it up quite a bit. Yeah, on, on the other side, I do think I will give credit. I think Lawrence has done has tried to really push it in transition. Unfortunately, been a couple missed passes. They've had the right idea. That's how they scored their one goal of the game. I like that idea, especially in a game like this, where obviously it's seemingly going to come down to potentially a goal being the difference in this one. Um, the Lawrence defense, I think I, I can't really, I don't feel like I put a ton of blame on them for the three goals that last yeah. one, a little bit of bad luck. Maybe you could say falling asleep a little bit with four seconds left. They've done a nice job. Lawrence has been really aggressive jumping those passing lanes, and that's going to be 
essential in trying to create that transition. But I think at the end of the day, you talk about the grass really, you know, in, in any sport it comes down to it. You hate to say it, but ground balls and passing and catching. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely been the difference here. So we uh, have about two and a half minutes until we get back underway. I think Morse will certainly be the happier of the two teams as we enter the second half here. Right, so we'll take a quick break again, and we'll be back for the second half. Morse on top of Lawrence, 3-1 to one as we get ready for the third quarter here on AM 1160 WSKW. Score. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Misstate Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits Midstate Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidstateUSA.com. That's MidstateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. This year, your tax return could literally improve every moment of your life with a new pair of glasses or an eye exam from your friends at Kennebec Eye Care and Waterville. Even if you already own a pair, it's always a good idea to have an extra set. Keep a backup pair at home for emergencies. Leave an extra pair at work. Or how about prescription sunglasses or computer glasses? Call 872-2797 to schedule an appointment. Kennebec Eye Care, 216 Main Street in Waterville. Online at KennebecEyeCare.com. Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialist. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs are recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England, plus a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell with you, and Adam Seroyce running the camera for us here in Fairfield today. 3-1, to one, Morse on top of Lawrence as we get ready to start the third quarter. Scoring breakdown is as such for Lawrence. Fortin has the lone goal with an assist from Scott. Four players share six points for uh, the Morse uh, shipbuilders. Ryan has an assist. Wood has an assist and a goal. Beverage has a goal, and French has an assist and a goal. Crowd is certainly filled in here in Fairfield. I know we made a common pregame of it being pretty empty, and now the homestand bleachers are pretty well full. We were joking. We were here way early. Obviously, we were out without the just seasons and seasons of expertise of Mike Violet. We got here extremely early to make sure we were ready. All right, third way, third period underway here. Starts with a battle for faceoff. Lawrence wins again. And uh, just to make my point, that's what I'm talking about there. Uh, you, you decide a little bit based on what your opponent is going to do as Lawrence comes out with a scrum. But there, Lawrence did it back, and as opposed to having a teammate there, everybody was right in on top of each other. Yeah, and a switch-up and face-off men for both teams. Preston Roy for Lawrence and Braden Cunningham taking it for Morse. Poolin able to spin around his guy, goes through two checks, now gets to the crease, and is getting absolutely stuffed at the net. That is already the seventh save. For Michael Martin, for Morse, who I would say really hasn't been challenged a ton. Skip pass transition here. Woods got it shot. That one easy. No change of direction. And that one easily picked up by York. And Poulin got into a really nice position in front of the net there. You almost want to see him go low as a nice save, as you mentioned, from Michael Martin. Poulin handling it now again as Lawrence quickly goes to transition the other way. I think Poulin was a little bit surprised he got to where that he was. That is true, yeah. Trying to find Fortin. That one's low. Fortin able to scoop up the ground ball. Now going to pick up a, a pick there, still under pressure. Hassled there by William Clifford. Now he backs it off, looking for some help. He's going to give it off to Colton Carter. Carter working from the point. Going to step down to the box now, back it out. Carter moves over to the right side, and he's going to move it down to the wing. Now they're going to go back to X, Poolin working exclusively from X there. Looking for Fortin, 
And uh, Ford not helping out there. Nobody really moving. you got to cut and, and get away with, with some precision. Pullen gives it up to Fortin, who's basically right behind him. Fortin. Yeah, Fortin's a freshman on this team. Their attack is going to look a little different next year, though. Pullen a senior and Mason Carter also a senior. So it's going to be put some positions open, but you still have that staple of Fortin, Liam Fortin up front. Fortin makes some indecision there, loses it, is able to check it free, scooped up there, now running through some traffic, hands free, shot, that one is saved, but draws the penalty nonetheless. And a uh, late whistle there, but this one going to go against Morse. Because they're going to get a slash here against uh, one of the shipbuilders, Dorville. So Dorville will go off. And this will be... The fourth time already that Lawrence will be man up. So Fortin handling from the left wing. Going to go back behind to Carter. Carter looking for Poulin, who misses it. Got to go track it down. Now they body up there. Trying to get some help from a teammate. And that one gets batted to the offensive box. It ends up in the stick initially. Of that was Addison Duplessis, but he can't keep a hold of it. Gets knocked out of bounds. So Lawrence going to keep possession here, trailing three to one. Man up again for the fourth time. They're one for one for three thus far. That pass has to work its way through traffic. Still loose. Morris able to scoop it up now. Quickly going the other way. Given up there and now able to go probably hide behind X and kill off this penalty is Tristan Beveridge. Beveridge does just that, now gives it up to uh, Dimmers, who works up the wing here. Lawrence not double teaming, so they're going to just let this one get killed off. It's going to be two of four uh, man-up opportunities already for Lawrence where they don't even generate a shot. Dimmers running back and forth, finally pressured. Now the penalty releases, so back to even lacrosse. Now just a... Scrum of bodies everywhere. Here comes a shot. That one, York gets a piece of it. Can't keep it, though, in his stick. It's going to go out of bounds. So give him another save. He's able to push that one up over to the cage. His fifth save already, but it's going to stay with Morse. And yeah, Lawrence seemed desperate not to get into any transition defensive opportunities. And you can see it there as they're a man up, and they just allow Morse to kill off the rest of that. Now they got caught a little bit too. They finally did double team, but they double teamed after right before they went even, so kind of created their own odd man situation against them. Morse moving it around again. Here going to get a pick. Split dodge the other way. Bounce shot. Easy save for York. There was nothing on that one. York gets his sixth save of the day. He's going to walk it up. No pressure from Morse at all. Halfway to midfield. Finally fires that one off. Able to hit, uh, that's, excuse me, able to hit grass. Quickly to get it the other way. Shot goes wide. I'm going to track it down with Martin instead. Fortin has a chance that it can't save it, though, and it goes out of bounds. And that one, unfortunately, because with the shot, would have stayed with Lawrence if he stands close to it, but since he bats at it, instead it's off with whoever's off last. That's the turnover. 7.32 here to go in the third. Three to one, Morse on top. Martin pressured by Fort, leaves that one short. Chance here, two on none. Fort on the backside gets, cannot get the pass. And that one is going to roll and stay in bounds. So unlucky there. You had a two on none fast break, and Fort just couldn't get down for that pass a little bit offline. And Lawrence really needed that one. Now that one too, nice pat, look, look, great look there from Fort and able to find a cutter. Instead, it bounces off the stick of grass and ends up in Martins, and he quickly hurls it to the other end of the field. Morse now on their own bit of transition, going to slow it up, and they seem content not to really try and push tempo. Wood can't handle that one off the top of his stick and has rolled to the far side of the field. Eventually picked up on the ground ball by Beveridge. What a snag. <laughs> Wow, wind picked up there, and AJ with the Odell Beckham catch. That's from, I'm not paying. I got to keep my hand on my stat sheet. We've yet to do a game where I haven't had stat sheets blown away. You think I'd learn my lesson? I'm gonna get a clipboard. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. I was at Staples today buying a hard drive, and I didn't grab one. Wood tries to force that one in the crease, gets checked, nothing on it. Lawrence initially comes out with a scrum, still has it. A lot of traffic there, dropped it off. Finally able to 
spin around, put it in his stick at Scott, but then he gets it checked out about midfield. Lawrence tries to pressure there, but going the other way with it is Langard. Langard at the top of the box, waiting for some help as Lawrence gets a long stick shoved in. <laughs> Careful there, bounce shot way wide as that one was rushed. Nice job by that Lawrence defender, that long stick midfielder. I believe that was, I want to say Reno, but I don't know that that was the case because he could have absolutely drilled that Morse defender and it would have been a penalty he held up, but I think the pressure they still felt by the Morse midfield. Working from X is Beveridge. He gives it up to Wood, working from the right wing. He gets topside. Now sets up there. Looks like he's going to dodge. Gets a pick. Tries to go the other way and gets pushed immediately back down behind Cage. Beveridge handling there. He sets up. Trying to come to the right side of York. Able to get around his defender. Initially gets a shot. I think York got a piece that immediately popped out in front. Ground ball scooped up and going the other way with it is uh, Tyler Dow about to midfield again, and that one's turned over yet again. Lawrence really struggling to clear here in this third period. Now Moore sets up their offense again. Again, a very patient offense. Part of the reason this is such a low-scoring game, it's 3-1. As Wood shows Dodge, now backs off. Morse on top, 446 here to go in the third. Beverage handles behind Cage. A little bit of token pressure. Gives it a wood shot. York gets a piece of it but leaves a rebound. Scrum for it in front. York's able to clamp it now. Takes it to the safety of the crease. Immediately steps out. No pressure there. Now tries to find Scott. Nice drop in the bucket there. Scott able to turn on the Jets. Scott quickly up the left side. He's got Fortin if he wants him. Gets to the center. Has, tries to go through a check and loses it. The ball rolls. And that one's eventually uh, pulling had it for a second. Loses his stick. And now Morse is able to pick it up. That one's loose in front of the cage, still fighting for it. Fortin has it, tries to get something on it, not much as he had to do opposite hand. Martin got a piece of it, still with Lawrence, though. Carter handling it, gets his hands free for a second, looking for, Mor for Morton, and immediately throws that into a more stick and now quickly going the other way. Chance after chance there for the Outlaws, just can't get one past Michael Martin. That pass in transition into the middle of the field. Scott had it for a second. Couldn't keep it, though, in his stick. Now a fight about five yards out from the goal. Still checks. Balls loose everywhere. Scooped. Not scooped. Wood <laughs> swats at it. Can't do it. Smacks his stick on the ground in frustration. Turnover on the shipbuilders. Lawrence has had is 332 here to go on this third. Lawrence has had opportunity to potentially free up one of their players almost one-on-one -on -one with the goalie just have not been able to execute that one pass. Lawrence trying to clear here. Dow double teamed. That one gets knocked loose. Wood and Beveridge challenging him. Cannot get the ground ball. Still fighting for it. Scoops it forward. Still loose. Takes a swat at it. Misses it. Checks Beveridge's stick. Still fighting for it. That one's going to score it up towards midfield. Ford grabs it. He gets shoved. Tries to pass it backwards. Gets it into the offensive zone where it's loose. Carter takes a swat at it. Now it gets batted back onto the Morse offensive side. Check there on the ground ball. Still fighting for it. That one scooped up, finally picked up. Nice juke there and able to get it up to Fortin. Now Fortin with a nice swim dodge goes right by his defender, but he was offsides. Well, they keep playing like this, and you're going to be more out of breath than the players. <laughs> what a sequence of events that was. <laughs> so all of that for a turnover, and Morse keeps possession with 244 here to go in the third quarter. French shows pass, split dodge now, gives it up. Shot, beverage. York got a piece of it. York got to be careful. He's giving up a lot of rebounds. He's quickly racking up saves. That's already his ninth against three goals against. He's handling it here in the center of the field. Tries to drop it off for his defense. Bounces off his stick into the offensive zone. Now back into Lawrence's side. Scoop there initially, though. Looked like he was unsure. Now a little bit casual with it, and that one gets checked out. Tries to kick it past midfield. Now tries to sweep it across midfield. Now picked up instead by a long stick for Morse. Flips it quickly. That's French. French skip pass. Finds uh, that's uh, Demers. Demers gets checked there and holds up. He backs it out. Now we'll see, I think, Morse working around the box a few times as they get some offensive substitutions. This might be good for both teams here. Just a chance to settle down after a couple of lengthy scrums. No one really being able to set up any kind of offense. Langer tried to cut that one to Dimmers. Missed him. It's going to roll, and that grass keeps it inbounds. No pressure there from Lawrence, so an easy scoop. I believe that was Winters 
uh, who was able to grab that one. He works to the top of the box in his right hand. Split dodge to his left, gets to the center. Nothing doing there. Now goes back the other way. Beveridge jump shot. Nothing doing there. French, though, on the backups, able to track that one down. I think what is the difference in this game to this point with 124 to go in the third quarter is Morris has at least gotten shots. That's, Lawrence has not been able to cash in on just offensive possessions into actual shots. Wood Haley there. Trail check keeps it through, but it keeps the ball high in a stick as that one goes over the crossbar out of bounds. French on the backup again. I'm just curious to see what the nature of that first matchup was where there was 20 total goals. We have four as we come to the near end of this third quarter. Yeah. 63 seconds left in this one. Morse has been on top 3-1 since half. No goals here. That pass sails over the head of Beveridge, and the grass not going to keep that one in. Turnover on Morse. So the clock stops with just under 55 seconds left. Lawrence, a chance to clear. We already saw a goal with basically no time on the clock. So it, it's not that it's infeasible. Unfeasible? Unfeasible. And we know the refs will certainly give you the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. <laughs> Haley, there's close. LeClark. He tries to get it to midfield, gets deflected. Carter trying to get it there and get it in the offensive zone as we got a scrum almost dead center of the field. 41 seconds left. Coming out of it, though, is Morse. Handling it is, uh, that's, do we have a 23? Was that Amaral? Might be 33. Into the crease there, a lot of pressure. Ball pops out. Now it's into the stick of, of that's not Scott, of uh, Carter. But as he throws it, it falls out the backside of his stick. Fight for about 20 yards out from the goal. Morse comes up with it again. French bodied up there, draws a double team, gives it to Dimmers. Dimmers from the top of the box, 13 seconds. Throws it into a man who just subbed. That's Langard. Langard gets to the center, shows shot instead, gives it up to Dimmers. Five seconds. Dimmers tries to get to the center here. Now he's going to give it up. Here comes a long shot. Langard, laser in. Are they going to count this one? That one was in. <laughs> that one was in. Much quicker decision this time, and we get the first goal of the quarter with one second on the clock. And Langard is like that in nice placement there. He drops his arms to that three-fourths shot and is able to squeeze that one in. More so than anything, he was able to go wide side of the cage, and that makes it 4-1 to one at the end of three. We will be back for the final quarter on AM 1160 WSKW, the score. Nokian Tires, available at 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. Your complete auto center. Mechanics you can trust, Nokian Tires, to keep you safe on the road. Plus, 201 Tire Battery and Service is a state inspection station. They have batteries and accessories, including custom battery cables available and of course those great nokian tires 201 tire battery and service route 201 vassalboro for excavation in the greater Skowhegan Waterville area, call PJ Diggs. Septic systems installed, new or replacement, new driveways, foundation holes, full house lots. If it's dirt, they do it all. Need gravel, sand, or crushed aggregate for your project? Call PJ Diggs. They have all the materials you need ready for delivery. Spring is here, and it's time to start digging into your project. For a free quote, call PJ Diggs, 431-4299. The excavation pros. If it's dirt, they do it. Family and veteran owned. P.J. Dix, 431-4299. I came for a visit, and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and, like, just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. No, no. Don't say that uh, Morris doesn't know when the shot clock's expiring because at the end of the second and the end of the third quarter, they have beaten the buzzer, and they've got a 4-1 lead here as we enter the final period. Yeah, it's almost like they're playing basketball. They're holding for the final shot. <laughs> Basically are. Long stick faceoff here for Lawrence. Taking it is, that was 27, wasn't it? I couldn't tell you. I can't see the numbers from here. 27 for Morse, that is. Oh, it's, sorry, Morse. My bad. Cunningham taking it for Morse. I did that again. Lawrence wins a combo team versus more than Booth Bay. Morse wins the possession, so they're going to start with it here on offense, and they've generally been pretty patient. I imagine with a 4-1 lead, they're going to really sit on this one and try and take the air out of the ball, so to, so to speak. Obviously, there's no air in a lacrosse ball. <laughs> Common sports saying. 
Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, I just wanted to. <laughs> I've gotten yelled at before for using other cliches that are not applicable. Dimmer show shot, nothing doing there. Gets it to Langert. He had the goal just before the third period ended as they're more than willing to just pass this back and forth from the top of the box. Here's a dodge. Hands-free shot. York's able to get a piece of that one. Again, he's got to be careful there. He's giving up some rebounds. Looking to clear. Scott's a good man to do so. He's got Jets. Turns them on. Looking to pass. Drops it off. Backside chance. Goal on the check. Wow. What a goal from Wyatt Poolin. Turning around. Firing it into that bottom left corner. How about this? And the credit Poolin, I thought, stopped short on an opportunity in the second period. Absolutely knows the contact is coming and buries that one to cut it to 4-2. to two. Huge goal. Less than a minute gone in the fourth period of play. Like you said, Lawrence within two now. And give Scott his second assist on the day. Both of them have come in transition. That is where Lawrence has had success. That's where Lawrence had great opportunities, just hasn't been able to cash in on them. 59 seconds gone here in the fourth. Lawrence cuts it back to a two-goal two deficit. Face off here, Lawrence initially wins. We're going to get a scrum. Fight for it still. Still scooping, still scooping, still fighting, still checking. Not even enough possession to release either team's players. And finally, Morse is able to pick it up and get it into the offensive zone. That pass is low. It's going to push its way to uh, Lawrence, and that one is picked up. Now taking the other way is Algier. Excuse me, Alger. He loses it. Now they're going to have a scrum for it. Dimmers had that for a second. Now Langard's able to come. Nope. Dimmers flips that one up in the air. Finally caught by Lawrence going back with his Campbell. That one gets by everybody. Martin picks it up. Nice puts on a nice juke. Now tries to drop that off to one of his defenders. Can't do so. He's pressured there by uh, LeClark. Finally, Morris able to push in the offensive zone. Maybe finally establish possession. Langer better watch out. Backside check gets rid of it. Demers got it on the wing. There, backside. Nice play. And that one misses. Wood had a golden opportunity and missed the cage. Rebound there. That one's wide. Push towards the end line there as they fight for it. Morse able to pick it up. Beveridge has it. Beveridge comes out from GLE. Gets to the top of the box. Shot from French. Cannot put it on cage. Goes out of bounds. But Wood has the backup. So it'll stay with Morse. 4-2. to two. Morse on top. 9.41 here to go in the final period. After a bit of a slower first three quarters, the start of this fourth has not disappointed. Shot after shot on both ends. Substitution here. Langard's going to come in. He gets it from Dimmers. He's going to center up here at the top of the box. Looks dodge. Shows his hands. Instead, he's going to pass it to the wing. Beveridge gets his hands free. Shot. That one, I think you might, that one hit someone? I missed it if you got a piece of it. It bounces out of bounds. Shot, though, means that backup goes to Morse, so they're going to keep it. Might hit pipe. Wood tries to skip past Langard at the top of the box. That are ramped up off of York's stick. We'll give him a save. We'll be generous. Give him give him 11. Beveridge trying to dodge, playing a two-man game with Langard. Looking left. Dimmer's out on the wing. Instead, Langard backs up. He's going to go back to Beveridge. Beveridge setting up a dodge here. Split dodge to his right hand. Now comes back to his left, gives it back to Langard at the top of the box. Langard pressured there, spins around, gets his hand free. Now backs off. Gives it to Dimmer's on the high wing. Dimmer's back to Wood, working from behind the cage. Now at the X position. Challenges initially, now trying to roll back the other way. Got some space, turns, shot, and I think Martin got just, excuse me, York got just enough of that and keeps it a 4-2 game. Now can they clear? That one gets out in front of Lawrence Defender, trying to body up here. Can you scoop it? Good stick lift there for Moore. Still loose, still loose. Lawrence fighting for it. Check. Coming out with it is Dimmer's. Dimmer's pressured along the sideline. Stepped out of bounds. Nice defense there by Preston Roy. He's able to push Dimmers out of bounds, force the turnover. Yeah, York made a save on that last shot, but it was Bullduck that got a piece of Wood's stick and really forced the air as he nearly Whoa. scores on himself. Jeez, I'm Pete. That one hit the side of the cage, but whew, that was too close. Yeah. Almost an own goal there. A great play by Bullduck. Nearly turns into a disaster. Line it up. Check's coming. Finally gets rid of it. Scott had it initially. Excuse me, that's not Scott. That's uh, Carter. Carter, seven. Scott, three. Keep mixing them up. He can't track it. Then loses his feet. Now going the other way is Morse. 
Morse in an unsettled situation. Langer touches up in the offensive box. Now he's going to back it off. He's free with his hands. Skip pass looking for Wood, who was right there at the crease. That one's going to go out of bounds. Lawrence had the backup, but that was not a shot, so they'll get it on the turnover. 7.30 here to go. Lawrence has to clear. They was looking for York, missed him. Now unsettled opportunity. Dimmer's right in front of the cage, and he scores. Wow, Lawrence got the goal and then have just been trapped in their own zone ever since. Finally leads to a goal. Moore said plenty of opportunities. It's finally Demers that pops one in and brings the lead back to three. And now Langer picks up an assist. And much uh, much of the team here for Morse, uh, pretty balanced. Almost all of them have a goal and an assist. Demers picks up his first goal, already had an assist. Langer had a goal, now he picks up an assist. And that moves it to 5-2. to two. So Lawrence got one back and then immediately gives it away as they have just struggled to clear, especially in the second half. And you saw it on full display there. That one gets bad in the offensive end. Great ground ball there by Carter, immediately hounded by three shipbuilder defenders. Tries to work it down. That pass goes long, gets past Martin. Ground ball now behind the cage. Morse batting at it with their defense. Carter taking a swat at it. Had it there for a second, is hitting the deck, is pulling. Morse finally able to scoop it up. And we're going to get a whistle here, and I'm going to guess a slash against Lawrence. No, I take it back. I think this is Morris. They dropped it. Difficult to tell sometimes. No PA announcers here in high school lacrosse. I think they waved out the flag. Good dodge there. Gets topside, and he's able to put it in. It was Fortin. Again, second goal of the game for Liam Fortin, and it comes at a really important time. Look at Fortin absolutely doing it himself. Look at that swim dodge. And he takes a shot and is able to put that one in. Fortin does it by himself, gets that goal back. He's got two on the day and cuts it back to a 5-3 deficit with 6.54 here to go in the final period. 28 seconds between goals on those two. Lawrence has had a lot of great opportunities. It's been the execution and then specifically York has done a great job in the second half. He's got a lot. He's given up rebounds, but he's gotten saves. They just haven't been able to clear. Here's a chance. Don't even give more possession. Then you won't have to worry about clearing. That one won initially by Carter. Couldn't scoop it up cleanly, though, as he hits the turf again. Excuse me, grass again. Still loose. Coming out of the scrum with it for Morse is Sawyer, Sawyer Wright. Gives it to Demers, who's going to slow it down on the wing. Going to wait for his long stick midi to check out. They're going to get another offensive midi substitution here. That's going to be Langard. I thought he missed the pass on that. Feeling for <laughs> Druniak, who was waiting there at the top of the box, but Langard's been the point man for the more shipbuilders today. Him and Beveridge have worked that right wing. Dimmer's going to get it now on the high left wing. Back behind Cage. Handling there is Michael Ryan. Ryan gives it up. Beverage tries to get his hands free. Turn shot. York got a piece of that, but couldn't again grab it. It's going to pop behind, and Ryan's able to scoop that one up again. Get it back to the wing. Beverage wants to do it again. Gives it to uh, gives it off to Langard. Didn't like the shot. He'll back it off. 542 here to go. Morse five. Lawrence three. Dimmer's handling from the ring, gets a screen as he switches to his left hand. Now backside, he had Ryan, but Ryan stepped forward, and that pass goes wide. Does not go out of bounds, though. Lawrence does not track that down. A mistake by the defense. Beverage able to easily get that, gets the GLE. Now gives it to Ryan. Ryan gets it up to Dimmer's on the wing. They're going to move it back up to Langard at the point. Looking for a cutting beverage. Instead, takes a check. Now moves it back to Dimmer's on the left wing. Dimmer shows a stick. Looking at maybe skip pass. Gets to the center. Langer's got his hands free. Shot. And that one is in. And that one, still five minutes to go, a lot of time. But that one could be the dagger. Puts the lead back up to three. And that one, Langer, I think, in the first half, couldn't really get that shot on Cage. It was way out there. He started to see his comfort there. Now he's put two in from high top side. And I think you're starting to see as well the Morse offense settle into a little bit of what it wants to do. Not a whole lot in the first half. Wood was big, uh, working from behind X. Here you just see a lot of the, the three-man game as they work with Dimmers on the left wing, Beveridge on the white ring, and then Langer from the point. 
Six to three. Lawrence was able to quickly cut it back to two and then has since twice, has cut it back to two twice and immediately given up a goal. Huge win there for Carter. Can he get to it? Gets to the offensive zone. No one's able to pick it up yet. And Morse comes out of it again with the ground ball, taking it the other way. That's Cunningham. Cunningham into the center of the field. Tries to drop it to Beveridge. Left that one short. It's going to roll. Not out of bounds. Beveridge able to get the ground ball there after the defender hit his feet. Shot. French couldn't get that one through. That was a kick save there from York. That one going to bounce all the way out where Dimmer is able to easily track it down with no pressure on him. 6-3, 426 to go. Morse ball, Morse on top. Dimmers gets a pick, gets his hands free, tries to skip it to Beveridge. Beveridge tries to go high to low, and that one I think hit pipe. It's going to bounce all the way out to midfield. You get a clamp there from the defense. Dimmers just tries to scoop it out of the way of the traffic. It's going to squirt over to the Lawrence zone, but who's going to come up with the ground ball? Dimmers takes a bat at it. Finally able to scoop it up for Lawrence. That's uh, Roy. Roy draws the flag. Roy's got a lot of space in front of him. He's got pulling with him. Bounce shot. That one hits the feet. Still comes loose. And that'll initial that stoppage will get the uh, man up opportunity for Lawrence. What a shot by Roy there! Just didn't get quite enough on it, though. That one just almost got by. Yeah, Yo, golden Martin. opportunity for one of his teammates as well. Martin had no clue where that ball was for a second. Nobody crashing the crease to try and scoop that just one up and in. It. Exactly. Yeah, well, that too. I, I don't mind Roy taking that one there, though. Eventually, you kind of want to take it early. You run out your own angle there, and he had pulling with him every step of the way. Certainly was well defended. It's the penalty here. Looks like it's on Demers. So this will be the sixth time Lawrence is man up. They have scored once. They've they failed to get shots twice, and there, quick shot, easy save. Quick outlet. Woods able to easily get it. Loses his feet. Now going to take a check for his troubles. He's able to turn, though, by the defender, and he's going to draw a slashing penalty. I think that's been the difference in the game is Morse has been able to easily find those outlet passes and get into the O zone where Lawrence has really struggled and gotten pinned in for extended periods of time. They've also given up two of their man-up opportunities like they did right there once again. That is three of six opportunities. Is there going to be a trip there? Dimmers, though, able to keep a hold of it, gets it to Langard. There's a delayed penalty here, so Morse just playing with house money because the second that Lawrence touches the ball, it's going to stop it, and Morse will go man up. So they're just killing time here. Under three minutes to go, they've got a three-goal lead. Beveridge turns the corner, and his man can't quite get it there. I take that back. I think York got a piece of it, but again gave up a rebounding, able to clamp. Either way, stoppage of play. We're going to get a penalty as going out for, I believe, a slash is uh, Lucas Campbell. Campbell, a senior on this Lawrence team, also a basketball player and a captain of the football team as well. 2.44 here to go. Lawrence, excuse me, uh, Morris a chance here to uh, tack on an insurance goal, really, if they just run the clock out, would be almost beneficial as well. Up 6-3 to three with 2.38 here to go. Langard handles from the point. He scored twice from up there. Gets a little check. Now he moves it to Beveridge on the wing. Back to Langer. Drops it off to Ryan. Ryan looks in for French. Somehow gets that to Wood. Wood can't put it on cage, though. And no one from Lawrence chases it down, so Demmer is easily able to just jog his way to back up there. So it stays with Morse. 220 here to go in the final period. 6-3, Morse on top. Beverage from that wing shot. That one hits the pipe. Comes out. In front of the crease, now gets batted out towards the front of the box, still loose, and finally scooping it up is Scott. Scott's got wheels. 2.05 here to go. Can't kill penalty, got to get transition goals. Scott gets into the center of the field. He's going to shoot, freeze his hand, shot, and he missed the cage, but he didn't follow it. And that is a huge mistake. He could have kept going, got his backup. Instead, Carter got a late start, and Michael Martin steals the possession for the shipbuilders. A tight race there behind the goal, but back to that last Morse shot. York has had the goal frame working in his favor all day. There's been so many shots off the off each of the pipes. Look, you thank the, you thank the pipes each day, uh, each time before the game, and hope for a little bit of help. And he's gotten some today. I think we're gonna get a timeout here. So Morse gonna take a timeout with 140 left to go. They're up six to three. They possess the ball. 
I think their penalties about run out, but regardless, they're nursing a three-goal lead here with 100 seconds left. We'll step aside for a quick minute. A.J. Knight, Ryan Bell with you on AM 1160 WSKW, The Score. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell here with you for the last 100 seconds of this one. Morse on top. They took the timeout 6-3 to three over Lawrence Adams here is running our camera for us, which, of course, you can find the archive, all live streams, video and radio at AM 1160, the score, and at centralmainsports.com. And, of course, sports on the score brought to you by Mid-State Machine. If you're looking for a career, check out the Machinist Development Program at midstateusa.com. That timeout, I think, just to just to give the team a reminder, hey, let's not do anything dumb. We're going to turn it over, turn it over back behind the goal. Keep your man in sight. Mark everybody, and let's not give up a cheap one. Dimmer starts with it on the wing. Skip pass there to Beveridge. Beveridge frees his hand, shot, and York had that one initially. Couldn't keep it in his stick, though. Already 17 saves. It is, York has done everything I think he can to try and keep this one in. Lawrence tried to push the pace on that one. Instead, hits a more stick. Still loose here on the Lawrence offensive side. That one squirts out. Langer's got a chance at it. He's going to draw a check. Then now able to step into his zone through a lot of contact. Now he's going to take a little body contact. Gets it to Dimmers. 109 here to go. Morse up three and just content to run the clock out. Yeah, I certainly don't think Morse anticipated this tight of a game, and it's a very important one for them. Morse tries to get it to, I think that was Wood on the on the crease there. Couldn't get it, but he gets checked into the crease. And they're going to call clean hit, which I think that was to the side. And so Wood, for his troubles, not only does he get body checked, he steps in the crease, so the violation gives the ball to Lawrence. Lawrence still got a lot of ground and a lot of work to do. 54 seconds left. They're trailing by three. Crazier things have happened, but they're going to have to get one quick if they have any chance here. And look who came to take the clear. Fortin has it. Goes by one defender. Got a long stick. Turns on the Jets. Easily by him. He's into the offensive zone. Tries to get it to Carter. Misses there, but there's back up initially. Now they just bat it towards the cage. That one might have actually been saved by Martin. Instead, it's tracked down by a Morse defender. Now Martin has it. Looking quickly for the outlet. Nice snag there by his defenseman. 31 seconds left, and now he turns on the Jets. Clifford using his height to the advantage there. That one was way up there. And not only that, he used his height, his vertical, and all six feet of that defensive stick. Yeah. Beveridge now takes it behind X. Your Morse don't do anything silly. And Morse, Beveridge took that shot about a minute ago, which was a decent look, but your coach at that point, you just don't want to turn over. Lawrence did get a chance out of it. Seven seconds, we get a whistle here that stops the clock. Lawrence gets it. They're going to hurl it. Five seconds left. That one goes by everybody, and Martin will catch that one, hold on to it, and that is the final score. It was a tight one. Lawrence had their opportunities, but Moore sweeps the season meetings between these two, 6-3. to three. We will step aside, come back with the postgame show, and pick our player of the game. When we come back, final score again, Moore 6, Lawrence 3. We'll be back in a few minutes on AM 1160 WSKW, the score. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy because it's all about taking care of people. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. 
from free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Misstate Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits Midstate Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidstateUSA.com. That's MidstateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. This year, your tax return could literally improve every moment of your life with a new pair of glasses or an eye exam from your friends at Kennebec Eye Care in Waterville. Even if you already own a pair, it's always a good idea to have an extra set. Keep a backup pair at home for emergencies. Leave an extra pair at work. Or how about prescription sunglasses or computer glasses? Call 872-2797 to schedule an appointment. Kennebec Eye Care, 216 Main Street in Waterville. Online at KennebecEyeCare.com. Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialist. AJ Knight, Ryan Bell, as we wrap this one up here, more sweeps Lawrence on the season, wins this one 6-3. to three. And for a Lawrence team that's sort of rebuilding on the fly, an improvement from that 14-6 to six loss earlier in the month. Uh, and this one, I think you watch the film on this, and you're going to be frustrated if you're Lawrence. They had their opportunities. I think you're going to be frustrated if you're Lawrence. You're also going to be frustrated if you're Morris. I don't think they at all anticipated a tight one tonight, and that's exactly what they got. Lawrence put up a heck of a fight and with that win, Morris go to 5-6, and six, a game closer to 500. They'll be able to move up in the heel points a little bit. They matched their season total for wins from last year where they went 5-7. and seven. They're now 5-6. and six. So at the end of the day, you're happy with the victory, but the way you got it was sloppy, to say the least. Yeah, it was a little bit of rough play on both sides. Lawrence, I thought, had a lot of opportunities in transition. I think at the end of the day, it came down to execution. Morse was a lot more comfortable in their offense, a lot more comfortable clearing the ball was the yeah. big one, especially in the second half. Uh, with you know, little spoiler here, York was abs- stood on his head for most of the game, especially in the second half for Lawrence, but then they just couldn't get the ball out of the defensive zone, and you, you give a team multiple chances, eventually they're going to cash in on him. And, and, and credit to uh, Morse, whenever Lawrence got one in the second half, Morse immediately got it right back. Yeah, and you alluded to fundamentals earlier on in the broadcast. I think that's also a difference today. I think Morse is the better team passing and catching, ground balls. Even at times, ground balls didn't quite show, but I think certainly passing and catching, clearing the ball, Morse did a much better job. And that comes with growth of of this Lawrence team. Again, you have a lot of young players, a lot of freshmen. I think there's six or seven freshmen on the Lawrence team, and a lot of them get significant playing time as well. Yeah, and for Morris, I think one of the things you'll be happy with, really uh, a spread-out offensive scoring. Uh, Everybody, so Lagard uh, and Demers both finished with three points. Lagard had two goals and an assist. Demers had one goal, two assists. And then French, Beveridge, and Wood, no, excuse me, French, Wood, uh, each had a goal and assist, and then Beveridge had a goal on an assist from Michael Ryan. So really dispersed uh, scoring there, uh, three points the high for both Demers and Lagard. Uh, on the other side, Fortin finished with two goals. Uh, Poulin had one. Uh, Fortin, one of Fortin's was unassisted. Scott had the two assists on the other two goals, so really not a whole lot there. And I think that's one of the things we noted, too. It seemed pretty easy. You talked about it coming in in the pregame. seemed like Fortin was definitely your best offensive player. And you know, credit a little bit to Morse defensively, and then I think you give a little bit of criticism to you know finding him I they right there we saw near the end of the game they had that clear they get brought Fortin up to run it through would have liked to see I think him get involved a little bit more in the clearing just to get the stick the right. ball in his stick a little bit more right I think I, he did come alive late in the game and again that came with just getting the ball in his stick a really nice goal on that third one coming from behind putting it in but again you got you got to get your best player the ball in the ozone and just didn't happen tonight for the Outlaws. And I think at the end of the day, the uh, an easy way to describe this one is that uh, Morse buzzer beaters, two goals yep. right as the clock expired, one at the end of the first half, one at the end of the third, which, wow. Momentum changers for sure. Although, to be fair, to credit Lawrence, they came out in that fourth quarter after the third quarter buzzer beater and put one in in the first minute. But after that, I mean, they just had so much trouble getting it out of the defensive yeah, zone and that turned the tide they, they came within two a couple of times, but really couldn't get over the hump and go on a run. 
So in a losing effort, but still stood on his head and did everything he could to get his team the the, uh, victory. York, the goalie for Lawrence, is our player of the game. Gave up six goals, had 17 saves, and just did what he could. On top of that, he credit, uh, there might have been a couple post saves in there as well, but he did all that he could. 17 saves against six goals against, did his job, especially as his team struggled to clear, but just... Could not get enough offensive possession. Uh, tomorrow, Ryan and I will be back. We will be still here in Fairfield, 3 o'clock start time, as we will be uh, calling Lawrence Baseball, hosting Waterville. Of course, check out the schedule for our full broadcast, uh, including the archives and, of course, live streams at the time. Again, at am1160thescore.com and, of course, centralmainsports.com. Thanks to Adam Sirius, who ran the camera for us tonight. will be with us tomorrow as well. He's Ryan Bell. I'm A.J. Knight. Have a good evening, and thanks for listening to Local Sports on AM 1160 WSKW, The Score. The preceding high school sports broadcast on The Place for Local Sports, 1160 WSKW, The Score, was brought to you by the following. For our videocast, Central Maine Community College. For the radio broadcast, Central Maine Motors Auto Group. For the audio live stream, Hammond Lumber Company. Also brought to you by Kennebec Eye Care, Mid-State Machine, Whittemore and Sons, Somerset Stone and Stove, 201 Tire Battery and Service, and by P.J. Diggs. Count on us for all your local high school and college sports. Sports Radio 1160 WSKW, The Score.